Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about the huge blackout patch that just dropped. It was this morning my time. It would be yesterday by the time you're seeing this video. I'm going to be going over all of the weapon changes, the nine bang removal, concussion buffs, character missions, and some of the other fun things that have been added to the game. If during the course of this commentary you hear some slight panting or whines or uncomfortable animal noises, that's because Ozzy jumped onto my lap during a very minor rainstorm and will not leave because he's terrified of thunder monsters. But let's go ahead and talk about blackout. The most noticeable thing is that the nine bang tactical equipment has been completely removed from blackout. There is nothing that you can do to get a nine bang now, and the decision behind this is simply that it was too strong. It was performing too well, it was coveted by too many players, late game would turn into just nine bang battles. It was kind of a meme in the community that as soon as you get hit by a nine bang, you should automatically requeue for the next lobby. So uh, the team at Treyarch decided to remove Nine Bang temporarily and see how to balance, adjust it to make it, as they say, have a place in Blackout and a fair place. My recommendation would just be put Nine Bangs in crates. Uh, if Nine Bangs are that powerful, you just make them crate weapons. That's kind of the easy balancing stick for any battle, battle royale. It's like, oh, something's too strong, I just make it really rare. In order to compensate and give you some tactical equipment since nine bangs are gone, we got a slight buff to concussion grenades. They now have increased throw range and you can stack two of them instead of just one at a time so they're more valuable to pick up. And in general when I play I just see people using concussions instead of nine bangs. So the actual gameplay change isn't that significant, it's just concussions are less annoying than nine bangs. The other uh, more global change is that all SMGs had their bullet travel speeds increase to help with long range range fights. Previously, the SMG rounds were just kind of slow, so you would have to lead targets a ton. If you were at range, you would have to aim up above them a ton, and it just wasn't a good feeling thing. So Treyarch decided to greatly increase their bullet travel speed with the idea of making them more uh, competitive to assault rifles. Unfortunately, I don't think that really worked. They're still kind of hit marker machines, which is their problem. The problem with SMGs was never that they had bad range or that the bullet dropped. The problem was simply that they have too much recoil for the range ranges that you need to use them at and because of the damage reductions with armor you can get like 15 20 hit markers on people to kill them which just drives them insane case in point this clip you're seeing right here with the cordite i can't play much better with the cordite i can't get many more hits on point or first but there's just no competing with that the damage and dps is just too low even point blank which is why the only ones i really use are the spitfire and a little bit of the SOG. speaking of the good old spitfire the spitfire got a recoil reduction so good for it and it's now a little bit more usable i thought it was just fine for blackout but i guess the idea is in blackout you're using the spitfire as kind of a shotgun alternative now you can use it like an actual submachine gun that has range so probably a good change one of the noticeable changes to assault rifles was that the rampart got buffed to have less recoil when you're shooting full auto and less sway when you're looking down the iron sights. In my opinion, it is significantly more usable now. The Rampart was by far my least favorite assault rifle in Blackout for some time. I used it a bit in the beta and I kind of enjoyed the DPS, but I learned really fast that DPS doesn't matter if you can't hit your targets. So running a Vapor, a Maddox, a KN, or of course the good old ICR is just going to be better than running a Rampart because you miss your shots. It's better to get like 18 shots on point laser accurate, which is how Blackout works. The Rampart is more usable now. It's not a good weapon now. It still kicks a little bit too much for my taste. However, it's now a sane alternative. It's now not, ew, the Rampart, guess I'll just use my pistol until I find something now. Now it's more like, okay, the Rampart, I can, I can make this work. At least it's gonna be dealing a bunch of damage. So the Rampart is significantly better. The Augur DMR also got a buff. They increased the center speed. So when you shoot, you're still going to have the same amount of recoil per shot, but your sights are going to recenter significantly faster. And they have faster bullets in that the muzzle velocity or the bullet travel speed has been increased. So it's now much easier to hit targets at range with the Augur DMR, much less leading. And of course, if you're running the long barrel, it'll be even better still. Don't use the suppressor. I don't know why the Augur DMR operator has a suppressor. That just kind of ruins the gun, in my opinion. The Swordfish got a burst fire spread reduction so that the uh, distance between your shots of the burst is less significant. I believe this was done to help the Swordfish at longer ranges. I don't really like the burst weapons in Blackout. I'm a big fan of just full auto high accuracy spray and pray like the ICR, but the reason I don't like the burst weapons is because the burst spread is too much for long range. Like, don't get me wrong, their DPS is fantastic, their damage is really high, their damage falloff is good, you can chunk people 
people really hard close range if they doubt you because you're running a swordfish. The problem is with the ABR and the swordfish that if you want to get like long range shots on people, realistically you're probably only going to hit one of them instead of the two or three that you need to be hitting to deal significant damage. So any change to get tighter spread for burst weapons and blackout is good in my opinion. And I'm going to try to using the swordfish a little bit more, but I still like the ABR best. There was a patch to all LMGs, the VKM, the Hades, and the Titan. They all have less recoil. They have less recoil per shot. And as it was described in the patch notes, there is less recenter offset, which means it's kind of like if you ever shoot a gun full auto and hold down the trigger really hard and it kicks up, 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 and eventually you're kind of looking at the sky, there's less of that. So it's less shake on your sight and less of that sort of upward drift as you shoot. It, it was kind of similar to the Rampart buff. LMGs didn't just become god guns. Uh, not that they were, and the Titan at least was never particularly bad. The LMGs are now just slightly more usable because people were avoiding them because rifles just perform so well. LMGs are now just kind of easier to use and I would recommend trying them out to see how comfortable you are with them. A fairly big change, and this is a little bit of the past patch, is that all specialists and chaos crew have been added along with higher drop rates for the character items. So you get character items out of boxes or out of uh, crates that fall from the sky, supply drops. I've had a lot of, or you, actually the Annihilator you have to get at the freaking firing range by shooting a specific target with a pistol, then you pick up the Annihilator, then you get a kill, then you gotta place top five. So that one's really hard, but it's a, at least it's a fun one. It tilts me off the face of the planet that the Annihilator is not a one-shot kill. Sometimes needing two or three hits depending on their armor is just uh, sort of tough to swallow, but it's still a very fun weapon, right? All of the other specialists are pretty easy to unlock. The Chaos Crew characters, some of them are easy, some of them just like get a headshot. Other ones are really hard. Uh, for Charlotte, I had to run somebody over. I had J-Hub stun them while I ran them over. But at least we're rolling out more characters, more customizations for them, more good stuff like that. So I'm ready. I'm ready for more. Always give me more. And finally, our last bit of patch notes is that the Blightfather from the beta is back. The Blightfather now spawns in the graveyard. He is big and he is mean and he is nasty and he's hard to kill. But at least this time when you kill him, he drops a ton of loot. And my time playing him, I was only able to kill him once. However, when I did finally kill him, he dropped three sets of level three armors, two trauma kits, he dropped a variety of uh, tactical things like uh, stuns and grenades. He dropped some weird potions that I didn't really get to use. He also, most notably, dropped two weapons that were fully kitted operator mods. I got, a, I got an operator KN57, an operator Cordite, and I've had people tell me sometimes they get three or four operator mod weapons. So killing the Blightfather is definitely worth now if you can. The Blightfather has a metric ton of health. I, I got to say at least 10,000 experience. I've played duos a lot instead of squads, and I found him super hard to kill in duos. Most of the time, if, even if you exhaust every single bit of ammunition in the graveyard to kill the Blightfather, it just won't be enough. Most people that get him come in through the asylum, loot everything in the asylum, then go to the graveyard, kill the people in the graveyard, loot the graveyard and the people, then kill the Blightfather, or they move up from Turbine. He's just he's just ludicrously, ludicrously hard to kill. And if you do want to fight him, be prepared to get shot in the back, like, a lot. Like, be prepared to get shot in the back just a ton. Guys, that is all for these patch notes. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. As far as the COD content on this channel coming up, as some of you may know, I just re landed back in America from Sweden. I'll have some content from the secret event I went to there. And sometime later this week, if not early next week, the Assault Rifle review should start and finishing out some operator mods and getting some gameplay. So look for that soon. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. I think I said that already. I'm losing my mind. I'm tired here. I just got off the plane. And enjoy the last little bit of gameplay so that we hit 10 minutes and the YouTube algorithm is pleased. Drifter out. Collapse imminent. Get to safety.
Objectives complete. Stand down. 